back in town stomping around in my old stomping ground. Welcome to Cook and Bell's Playhouse. This is my wife, Michelle Bell Cook. And this is my husband, Brett Cook. We are a country music duo that's been touring all over for the last 15 years. And through those years, we've met a lot of great artists and musicians. And today we're going to share some of our music and collaborate with some of the best in the business. Our special guest today is soulful country singer, Greg Rhodes. Welcome, Welcome to Cook, Cook and Bell's Playhouse. Playhouse. I'm back. Sticking to my guns, making a good run, taking the right track. Hey, y'all, it's good to be back. So today's the day. I've been anxiously awaiting to uh, do this with Brett and Michelle and uh, heading to the Playhouse to jam with them. And not only am I excited to, to jam with them, but you know, they're musicians. They, they have some great musicians, probably the best in the Midwest. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm a little, uh, got a bone to pick with Brett though, because uh, he waited till the third season to have me as a guest. And you know, they're like uh, second parents to me. So I'm gonna have to, uh, to talk to him about that one. But. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. I met Greg four or five years ago when I first started playing with Cookin' Bell. And uh, he sang with us at the Christmas show, I think, and a few other times just randomly through the summer. And I love the way he sings. I love the song selection today, so I'm pretty excited about playing today. Mr. Greg Rose, how are you, sir? Hey, Fred Michelle. Hello. Hey, man, glad to, to see you. you. Glad to have you here. So, this today. is the playhouse. You huh? look handsome, you yes, look, it is. You look beautiful. Thanks so much for coming. You ready to play some music? Yeah, let's Ready rock to rock them out? Yeah. Well, let's get out of this crazy weather. Come on inside. All right. Come on, Bob. Woke late this morning, forgot to shave. Holding my jeans got me a bad hair day. Like it or not, she's walking my way. Not a perfect sitting, really wasn't ready But I can't let this moment slip away Making hay while the sun is shining Leap of faith, gotta take that chance Miracles have their own sense of timing Got to be ready to make Hey, while the sun is shining But it's times like this that you just can't miss So look out, here I go for a kiss I'm making hay while the sun is shining Leap of faith, gotta take that chance Miracles have their own sense of timing Got to be ready to make hay Slow down Great big dreams on the edge of a small, small town We could just go home, we could turn around Turn around But I was thinking, baby, I've never seen Vegas So let's get crazy and lay that hammer down Making hay while the sun is shining Leap of faith, gotta take that chance Miracles have it own sense of timing You got to be ready to make Hey Well, 
Well, Greg, it's awesome to have you here at the Playhouse. Thanks for having me. We're going to have a lot of fun today. It'll be awesome. <laughs> well, I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Michelle and I both have considered you uh, as one of our kids. That means a lot. We've uh, seen you grow since uh, the first time that we saw you sing in your third grade play. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> I've known you since I was a little boy, lived in the I same know. neighborhood, and I've always looked up to you too, you know, anytime oh, you were rehearsing. That. Which we thought was so sweet when we would be practicing in the, our garage of our house with a band and you'd be walking around the neighborhood. That and was would back stop. when you were cooking waters. Yeah, a long, so, long, time, long ago. time ago. But back, I want to go back to the third grade play when we did see it. He and I were sitting in the audience. You went to Yorktown Elementary mm -hmm. School and our oldest boy, Bradford, right. you guys are the same age. And so we were watching the third grade play and this little dark haired boy with dark features came out and had a little solo and it was you. And I looked at him when you were in third grade and said, oh, my gosh, this kid is is going to be phenomenal. Because just in third grade, you were so great already. Yeah. So we knew you'd grow up to be as talented as you are. And I think you almost had a beard then. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I matured really early compared to most people, you know, That's in, my, what, in my grade. So, yeah. yeah, Brad would always come home and go, that Greg Rhodes kid? He he's already, already got a beard. He's already got a beard <laughs> in middle school. So you had facial hair. But it was Johnny early. Appleseed. I remember the it play. Was, I yes. sang a solo. I have a dream, a beautiful dream. <laughs> now I'm going to make it happen. I think. Wasn't he in that play and he had the yes. same solo? Yes. Several years later, Seth was in the same play, the third grade play, same school, and had a little solo as well. That's crazy how yeah, that worked. It is. Well, her dad used to be in a, a band that was probably one of the most popular bands around this area. Right. Yeah. And like you said, you used to walk slow past mm -hmm. our garage and see if we recognized you when we were rehearsing. Uh, Carl Story was on one of our episodes and we were talking off camera that he used to, when he was underage, he would go to the club or wherever they were right. and they'd look through the window and sneak and, and try to listen to her dad's band, yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, I think as an artist, you always you always look up to other people when you're oh, younger yeah. and. Especially locally. You yeah, know, I mean, I remember, I remember I would sing for anyone that would listen. I would yeah. set up in my driveway and sing for the neighbors you know yeah. i'm just trying to go home crazy but <laughs> yeah i mean anyone who would listen so to for you to live just right down the road and to come watch what you guys do you know i thought hey this could actually be something that i could do yeah. you know yeah. a dream of mine so. yeah. yeah it's amazing how we're all inspired by somebody yeah. in the music business now we're going to get more into the music but for the people that don't know mm -hmm. greg rhodes you know you was uh raised by your mom um, a single parent for a long time, and you had a brother named Kyle. Yeah, still do. Kind of, yeah, yeah, you still <laughs> He's do. Still your brother. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, uh, tell us a little bit about that life that you had as as growing up and growing up. I mean, I had a wonderful childhood. My mom, mm -hmm. you know, she was a single mother raising two boys. Um, worked really, really hard, you know, to provide for us. And you know, uh, not having my dad around as much as I would have liked, you know, it was a little tough, but. But I know that, you know, there were reasons for that at sure. the time, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, you know, my brother, he was born mildly mentally handicapped. And it was a lot on my mom to take care of him. Sure. And, and so, you know, I, I stepped up at a really young age. And, you know, I, I tried to be there for my brother and, mm -hmm. and for my mom, you know. So, you know, that, that made me grow up a lot quicker than most. But, yeah. you know, I'm thankful for those things, you know, that happen oh, yeah. in your life like that. Because it only makes you stronger and helps you grow, yeah. you know, yeah. as a person. So. It defines you. Yeah, as a person. Well, and we we really saw what kind of influence you you've had on Kyle over the years. He even it's been sings amazing. himself. So yeah. yeah, yeah. He he really does look up to me as a big brother, and that's awesome. I mean, he gets in his room and and sings along with with even your guys' music. So yeah, yeah we were talking cool. about Kyle. You know, he was a little reserved, kind yeah, of. He was laid for a back. Long time. Yeah. And music is a language that no matter where you are in your walk of life, it can it can make a difference. And in your brother's life, mm -hmm. because he was more introverted, as soon as he started doing music, brought him out of his shell. We would, you know, we would even invite him up uh, Delaware County Fair, a local fair, and we'd get him up and sing, sing a song. And and folks didn't expect him to sing perfect, but it was it was the idea that this man has the courage to get up yeah. and do something that he's probably never thought he could do. It was a bittersweet moment. Yeah. yeah. And he worked so, really hard for that, too, you know, to, to be able to get up and sing with you guys. Yeah. He always has looked up to you, too, so. Well, he lives and breathes music. I mean, that's his thing. He, you know, he, he says he's writing songs now, and he plays a little keyboard, and, you know, yeah. he spends a lot of his hours every day loving music, which I think is just 
fantastic. And when you see him, it's it, that's what he talks about too. Yeah, he's got yeah. a deep love in his heart for it, and and I it probably started, I'm sure, from from watching you. Yeah. And yeah. what's crazy too is that um, you know when he was younger, the doctors had said he wouldn't be able to talk, he wouldn't be able to walk normal, wow. and you know so music has brought him out of his shell in that way yeah. too. I mean. He's always been able to talk, which is a blessing, but yeah. he's nice. even singing now, so it's it's really cool. And your guys' music has, has brought him out of that shell, so that's really great. Yeah, that's we cool. feel honored that he listens to our music every day. And my favorite thing about Kyle is he'll videotape our shows, and he'll send them to us, a copy, and the whole time the video is on me, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> he you're beautiful. Yeah, he's we a big, both think you're beautiful. I would think he's probably into my maybe my number one fan, yeah. Kyle is. <laughs> Sweet yeah, kid. But I'm never in the video, so. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the biggest blessings, too, in my life was mm -hmm. when my dad adopted me and my brother. He was my stepdad at the time, and he took us in as his own kids. Not a lot of, you know, men would do that. Absolutely. So um, when I was 17, uh, he said, you know, would you like me to adopt you two? Well, and that's cool. So to, you know, have a father figure around, uh -huh. um, it was a changing point in both of our lives. One, it probably took a little bit of pressure off of you really having to be the man yeah. Of the family. Yeah. You know? I mean, he's taught me a lot. He's a very wise man. Yeah. Good and, man. Uh, so he's always someone that I can go to if I have anything and, and say, hey, you know, how, how can I get through this? Or give me some advice, you know. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. good to have that. Absolutely. It really is. Well, Important. foundation in your life. You know, you, you had to do a lot of that on your own in a sense. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So for him to yeah. come in and, and help uh, sustain that foundation, help you build. And like you said... Help you become a better man. I'm getting a little teary thinking. I, know. <laughs> I do have a bone to pick with you, though, before really? we go any further. Yeah. I said on the way here I was going to bring this up. Not with Michelle, but I've, I've been on you a little while. Hmm. I'm going to have your back here, whatever it is. To have me as a guest on this show. You know, you waited three seasons <laughs> until, until you asked me to be part of this. What You know, what's up with that? Well, it's, it's like a fine wine. <clears throat> I, I just wanted to make sure you was, you was right where we needed you to be. <laughs> That's not true because he's been right where we needed him to be no, for a long that's time. True. <laughs> no, I just, uh, you know, there's some things that was going on in your life. You was becoming uh, different stages. And right. so uh, now's the time. Yeah, now's the, the time, time, you know. We'll talk time. about those stages a little bit later. It's about but time. Well, we have something really, really cool in common. <laughs> we do. We recorded a song called Broken Road mm -hmm. on our Cooking Waters record back in 2000. And. I loved that song, and it was a song that I actually found from a girl named Melody Crittenden. Mm -hmm. She had a record deal in country music, and there was a video released on that song. And I sat in my chair, I was at the, at the house all by myself, and I just cried. I cried through that whole entire song because I felt like the song was my life written on a, you know, that somebody wrote that song about me. Isn't That's that the way crazy I felt. how that can work sometimes yeah. when you find a song? Yeah, and so I was blown away by it, and I knew that when we recorded a record, I wanted to put that on our record. And thankfully we did. It, it ended up turning out really, really cool. And three years later, a group in country music called Rascal Flats recorded it, made it a number one song. And so uh, the thing that you have in common with that is you recorded a song as well that a group called Emerson Drive made a number one hit a couple years later. Yeah, we traveled to Nashville back in, what, 2003 yeah. to begin searching for material for the first album as a country album. And yeah. uh, I was given a song called You Still Own Me. Mm -hmm. and I heard the lyrics, and I thought, this is a great song. Just the melody, everything about it, it is really like good. Yeah, it sounded like a hit. So I said, we have to put this on the project. We just yeah. have to. And I, I lived with her for a few days. You know, I listened to it in the car, drove around, and I thought, I love this. This is so catchy. So yeah. so we decided to put it on the, on the project, and I'm glad we did. Sell sign on the front of my trucks Call any time cause I'm always up Making off One that I won't be used. I bought a one-way ticket on the westbound plane Four hours later I was wearing shades in California Just hanging loose I didn't pack one nail more And I'm free I can go where I want to go to what I want to do be who I want to be but baby you still own me say what I want to say hear what I want to hear dream what I want to dream but baby 
Instead of staring at the ceiling, I hit the beach, took a long walk. It didn't help me much. Sat down in the sand with a handful of shells, kicked off my shoes while me, myself, and I watched the sun come up, looking out across the sea. In about 2003, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to help produce a record on you, and uh, you kind of went pop back then. I did. I was young, and yeah. I was just experimenting on kind of what style I was wanting to go for. Yeah. So you were still trying to find you. You even had the frosted tips in your hair. I did. I had like the <laughs> I was in. I had the in sync style hair. Yeah, it was horrible looking. Yes, dance, dance <laughs> movements. All well, what was I thinking? You I mean, looked great back then. It was in. Thanks. But a local radio station, WLBC, actually played it. Yeah, I mean, to, to be still in high school yeah. uh -huh. and, you know, to turn on the radio and hear your song playing, yeah. that was the best thing That's ever. Life, yeah. Yeah, I remember the day I was pulling up to the bank, you know, cashing a check, and yeah. I had on WLBC and my song came on, and I, like, called all my friends, <laughs> and I'm like, turn it on right now, I'm on the radio. I was so happy, yeah. you know, it was a really awesome moment. Cool moment in life. Well, and then when Jim Cooper, mm -hmm. your dad that adopted you, Took you from the inner city when you did pop music <laughs> into the country. Yeah. Because he has a farm, he, he has cattle. Yeah. Yeah. So you thought, heck, if I'm going to live on a farm, I'm going to start I doing country, do country music. music. <laughs> no, I mean, I've always, I've always loved country music yeah. growing up. And, you know, I've always been able to relate to a country song the most. You know, yeah. I appreciate all types of music. Yeah. But country music itself is something that I've always loved. So yeah. it's, it's a story. been in your heart. Yeah. It's a story that you can actually follow, you know, a yeah. lot of times in country music. Well, we happened to do a country record on you. Yeah. And then we took you on the road, mm -hmm. and you actually opened our show, or we'd bring you out in the middle of our show. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you did that for probably a couple years. That was such a blast, too. I mean, it gave me so much experience, you know, uh -huh. just being able to travel with you guys and, and see how you guys do it. And you know, like I said, from being a young kid, you know, always wanting to do something like that, you know, I didn't know if that was ever really reachable, yeah. you know, and... To be able to do that, that was awesome. Well, we saw your potential, and we knew all you needed was just time on stage, and that, that was really all you needed. I'm glad and you, you did. Yeah, and you did mm -hmm. it for a couple of years, and, and then you just flew. You know, you started booking yourself and and just started doing things on your own, and and it was awesome for us to get to see you do that because it, you just really matured from the time you were on stage with us to the time you just started doing it all on your own. Yeah. And, and you, you owned the crowd. You had the crowd in the palm of your hand, and we knew— you were exactly where you needed well, to be, and you got there quick. He's a great entertainer. Yeah, you got there quickly. And I know during that time, you had a lot of girls coming and seeing you, <laughs> but there was one special girl. There was. Who Heather, was she? Heather Rhodes. <laughs> well, Heather Hofer at the time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was doing a show, actually local, and I was 
afterwards, you know, at the product table, um, you know, talking to the people who come out to the show. It's kind of like what you guys do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't expected at all. She came up and, uh, you know, she had bought a CD and got we got to talking. And the first thing that struck me was her blue eyes. They were so bright blue. She mm -hmm. is a pretty girl. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, can I get your number? You and did that day? I did. I said, can I have your number? Your Which wow. I right. never did at the ever at any show. But, yeah. you know, I, I asked for her number. I called her. The next day, I believe, and we started dating, and wow. that's how we got to know each other. So, what was the conversation at the table? Did she tell you that she sang or anything like that when you guys were talking to each other? No, I actually, I had no idea that she had sang at the time. It was just small talk. Yeah, it was just small talk. Really? Just she said, "I really enjoyed your show," and there was a little flirtation, you know, yeah. going on, and and I I picked up on that, <laughs> and I thought I like this girl. Yeah, you know, so she's beautiful. But no, it wasn't until later, you know, that she. Uh, she had a CD that she had done for her birthday. Her dad took her into the studio. She's always enjoyed singing herself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, she went to the studio and cut a little a record with Mark Pay. He yeah. actually produced the record. Mm -hmm. He was a guy that traveled on the road with you guys for a while. Yeah, and produced and, our first two records. Yeah. And so I heard the CD and I thought, this is great. Yeah. So I said, why don't we take this out on the road for a while? Why don't we, you know, do something with this? Yeah. And we did that for a while. We actually went into the studio and cut a record together, went down mm -hmm. to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, great we, record. And we actually, I, for the first time ever, I dove into co-writing. Yeah, because yeah, you'd never right. had before. Yeah, some good friends of mine, uh, Mike McKillop and Mike Call and Kyle Miller. We all, you know, formed a group and we decided to, to write along with Heather. Yeah. And we, we created some really good tunes together. And yeah. so we decided to cut that on a record and it was a great record. We, we did a tour with it for, for two or three summers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really great. And so. So before you did the record together, mm -hmm. you guys got married. Yeah, we did. We got married, had a wedding in 2008. We've been together wow. for quite some time now. So She was the most beautiful bride I have ever seen. We have sang at probably 300 weddings. I've seen a lot of brides. She was the most beautiful bride ever. Porcelain Breathtaking. Doll. Yeah, she looked great. Yeah, I'm great. taking back to that day just thinking about you seeing, yeah. that, seeing her walk down the aisle towards me. It was, yeah. I'll never forget that moment. It's beautiful. been really sweet for us to see the love that you two have for each other. Thanks. Because it's... Um, and like you said, it did happen fast. It did. And it didn't shock us, though, because when we met her and we saw her and we saw your chemistry together, it was just, it was really sweet for us to see that. And and we were happy for you because you're such a great man and you deserved a wonderful woman. And, and the fact that you found her and it did happen so quickly, we were just so happy for you. Thank you. She's an awesome girl. And I took some time off for a while after that, yeah. after we had traveled for a while, and, mm -hmm. and we decided to start a family. And that's when we had our daughter, Cortland. She's 11 months now. She's almost going to be a year. Wow. I can't believe that. And she so. is adorable. I love her to death. I've she, never seen a baby. life changer, but yeah. so worth it. I have never seen a baby that looks so much like both parents. <laughs> she is. I mean, you look at her and you see Heather and you look at her and you see you. She's a good, good mixture of both of you guys. Sweet as can be. Thank you. So you but, like being a dad? I love being a dad. It's the greatest thing in the world. It's, it's a life changer, like I said, but... It's the best thing that can happen in your life. Oh, aside from, you know, marrying, mm -hmm. you know, Heather, sure. it's, it was one of the greatest moments of my life. Do you still change the diapers? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a hands-on dad. I mean, I, I dive in there and I do well, what I you got to be hands-on when you're doing the diaper. Well, <laughs> you can't do it hands-free. What are you thinking? Actually, I did get a diaper kit from a friend. And it oh, had, really? had, you know, like a the nose pin. plug, the, the clothespin, <laughs> and the mask, and the gloves. And I, I contemplated on using that a few times. Sorry, Cortland. I know you're going to watch this someday and say, yeah. thanks, Dad. But. Yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> he, the first two weeks, I didn't change a diaper for the first two weeks. But then after that, it, like, literally stopped. Completely. So that's why I ask you, are you still changing the diapers at 11 months? Because it up? stopped. Do you get up in the middle of the night and when the baby's I crying? will say I'm a very, very uh, hard sleeper. So you don't always hear. <laughs> I pretended I was. The he first, did. He'd pretend that he was a hard sleeper. Yeah. The first couple, uh, well, the first couple weeks, I'd want to get up with Seth. Oh, and, it was great. Every other week, take turns. But then, man, I got to the point where I'd be laying there and I'd have my eye open from the opposite He's side so she was. Yeah. Gonna get up and do <laughs> this exactly. Right now. And you I mean, knew he was doing it too, oh, didn't you? Oh, yes. He didn't fool me. I would get so mad at him. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> having a family is great, so yeah. I really love that. We're happy for you. Thank you. Well, love is a very powerful thing. And this next song we're going to sing is about a couple that had been together for 60 years. And, and hopefully we can say you and Heather and... Michelle and I are going to see 60 years together as a couple and, and be able to share that love that they had. 
And it's, it's just a great song um, because even when she got to the point where she was getting sick, um, he still stuck with her, man, and stayed there. And it was, yeah. you know, even though she was older in age, um, he still saw that young, beautiful 18-year-old girl. It's such a good visual <clears throat> song, too. I really mean, the is. lyrics just speak so much volume to the song. A guy by the name of Mark Schultz in Christian Music wrote the song Walking Her Home. Mm -hmm. And he recorded it, made it a hit in, in Christian Music. My nephew brought the song to my attention several years ago back. And when I listened to it, I cried the whole way through because it is, it's such a beautiful story. And, and I knew that if Brett and I did record another record that I wanted it on there, I knew Brett could do such a great job on it in delivering the story. Well, thank you. Man. You're welcome. Thanks. And you did, you did a great job. <laughs> um, and so that song is, is probably the song we're now most known for is yeah. Walking Her Home. It's the last song on the record. We thought it was a beautiful ending to our record to have it on there last. And and we're just really proud of the way it turned out. But but more importantly, I think as a married couple, and I know you can relate to this, um, it's something that we all hope that we can have a 60th wedding anniversary, you know, both be healthy enough and um, mm -hmm. to be able to have a 60th anniversary and look forward to that. What was the first time I actually heard it was your guys' version. And um, I think it's a well-written song and it's very visual, which I love about it. It's a beautiful story and it, when we sing it, I still, sometimes get choked up and we've done it now for a couple of years and it's still a song that means so much to us. Looking back He sees it all It was her first date the night he came to call Her dad said son Have her home on time and promise me you'll never leave her side He took her to a show in town And he was ten feet off the ground He was walking her home And holding her hand Oh, the way she smiled, it stole the breath right out of him. And down that old road, with the stars up above, he remembers where he was the night he fell in love. He was walking her home. More years in a waiting room Half past one That's when the doctor said Come in and meet your son His knees were weak When he saw his wife He was smiling as she said He's got your life as she slept, he held her tight His mind went back to that first night He was walking her home Holding her hand Oh, the way she smiled It stole the breath right out of him Down that old road With the stars up He was walking her home He walked her through the best days of her life Sixty years together and he never left her side A nursing home at 85 When the doctor said It could be her last night And the nurse said Oh, should we tell him now? Or should he wait until the morning To find out? But when they checked her room that night 
He was laying by her side He was walking her home And holding her hand Oh, the way she smiled when he said This is not the end And just for a while They were 18 She was still more beautiful Walking her home Looking back He sees it all It was her first day The night he came to call So, Greg, we know that you started at a very young age singing. I did. Your family members, your grandpa, your dad, yeah, who, who my, influenced you? My grandpa, Jesse Rhodes. Uh -huh. uh, you know, he traveled when he was younger with a group. And what's really funny about this, you guys are going to find this very interesting, is that back in the 50s, my grandpa was part of a PBS televised show where it was actually the first televised variety show where they actually brought talent really? to PBS and <laughs> did recordings. And we're able wow. to, you know, to showcase different artists. I, I believe like Little Jimmy Dickens was part of oh, it. Oh, that's fantastic. And they, wow. they wore like the old style clothes. I've got to see pictures of that, oh, which is so really cool. awesome. So kind of now, like looking back at that and then seeing how we're doing this and yeah. and you're doing a, you know, a public show like this too with different artists wow. and showcasing. It's did he really host cool. it or did he just play in the band? I believe he just played. That's cool. Well, your, your grandpa is very well known musically. In this town, mm -hmm. yeah. if you talk to any musician, they have heard the name Jesse Rhodes. They have, and it's, it means a lot to me to be able to carry on that legacy sure. of you know my grandpa, and then also my dad. His name is also Greg Rhodes, yeah. and he's a great player, Talented great guilty. musician too. And you know, so all of that has carried through the family, and I think it's really, really neat that you know I'm able to carry on that legacy. Maybe your daughter Cortland will eventually carry on your <laughs> legacy. That would be my hope, you know. I'm yeah. not going to force that, but I would hope that she would enjoy music as much as I do and her mom does and yeah. there's constantly singing going on in our house. You know, we're constantly playing music and mm -hmm. she's already getting into the groove when we're playing music. <laughs> She'll be moving around yeah. and so it's really cute to watch her just love music as much as we do. Well, yeah. as great as you both are as far as singing, she's she'll have a voice for sure. I hope so. She, I think she will. I, you know, I think when she was born, uh, you know, some of the family members who came out to the hospital, they said, we thought we heard her humming already. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? Yeah. You know, so, but no, I mean, I would hope that she could sing harmony like her mom. Maybe we yes. could do like a trio and awesome. do, you know, gospel music. That would be yeah. awesome. Are you saying that you have uh, lead singer's disease? Like me? I do. I do. I have to admit that. I mean, <laughs> I can do harmony, but not well. Heather does harmony well. Her and yeah. I are alike, and you two are alike. Yeah. That's why that's why we're great couples. We balance <laughs> each other out. The sun is telling me there's so much I haven't seen. I've got a restless inclination. I got a restless yeah. inclination. Pack a bag and disappear. I ain't looking in the rearview mirror till I find a new location. Time is wasting. Gotta get away down the highway. Gotta get going. I'm out of here. Goodbye. So long. I got a great big world to discover. Gotta get away, got a suitcase, gotta get a lot, turn the key, put it in, drive, chase the white line. Got a lot of blue sky miles to cover. Gotta go, gotta play, gotta get away. Give me a mountain top for an ocean breeze. Take me north, south, west, or east. I don't care which way I'm going. I don't care which way I'm going. I don't need a map to show me where. I know when I get there, I'm gonna get these wheels in motion. Rolling, rolling. Gotta get away down the highway, gotta get going. I'm out of here, goodbye so long. Got a great big world to discover. Gotta get away, got a suitcase, gotta get a lot. Turn the key, put it in, drive, chase a white line. Got a lot of blue sky miles to cover Gotta go, gotta play, gotta get away
suitcase, gotta get a light, turn the key, put it in, drive, chase the white line. Got a lot of blue sky miles to cover. Growing up in uh, my life, mm -hmm. I, uh, as an eighth grader, started going to church pretty heavy and, and gave my life to Christ when I was a freshman in high school. And, and I chose gospel music starting out my music career. And gospel has always been really close to my heart. Even to this day, we'll do songs in our shows on the road mm -hmm. and uh, pick the songs that we feel like uh, really can inspire somebody. You know, when you sing anyway, you want people to, to either laugh, smile, make some kind of emotional mm -hmm. connection to your song. Sure, that's, that's what you why want we, as every artist. Yeah. That's what we sing for. We, we want them to feel what we're singing. And gospel music's always been that way with me. Mm -hmm. Now, as a child with your grandpa and your dad, Greg, did you, did you ever sing gospel music at all in church with them or around the house or anything? Yeah, I remember... Back at when I was really young, I would be able to, you know, go over and stay with my grandparents. And he always had his guitar out playing and, and my dad, Greg, would come over and, you know, we would play together. And it was a lot of fun to do that. And, you know, I will say, you know, over the years, uh, you know, my dad, Greg, and I have been able to kind of push the reset button on our relationship. Awesome. And it's really great that we can have a strong relationship now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, music, again, is the common denominator. Um, you know, you may not always connect in the areas that you can't replace, sure. you know, when you were young. Sure. And so, and you can't expect that right now, mm -hmm. but you can expect that from here on out, you can, with your music and other common denominators, build a relationship. And like you said, reset that button yeah. and not look to and the past. And I think past. that's important yes. in life is it to is. be able to do that, to, to put the past in the past and move mm -hmm. forward. And I feel that we're both in a really great place to where we are right now in our relationship. So that's awesome. Well, it was really cool that your dad, Greg, got to come by and and Yeah, he was really excited us. to be be here today and to see what this is all about. He was wanting, wanting to support me. So that's great yeah. that he was able to be here. He was a great cheerleader. He was. Yes. He was. He was really into Telling us how great we are. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always awesome to hear. We I, are great. <laughs> yes, I think I, so. I love hearing it. I, I, don't, do I don't get to hear it enough from my wife, <laughs> but I love to hear. You are great, Brett. All right. Thanks, Greg. You're okay. Great, I, don't, I don't need it from you now. You're great, honey. Okay. Appreciate <laughs> it. I want to talk about the song, I Can Only Imagine. Mm, great song. You did that at our Christmas show a couple years back. Killed it. You got a standing ovation. Yes. It was the highlight of that Christmas show. And I thought about it for weeks to follow. I mean, it just really touched me. And that song was special to me before I ever heard you sing it. My dad, the, the last three months that he was alive in the hospital, mm -hmm. we played a, a CD of all kinds of music, Christian music and, you know, just old country music that he loved. And that CD played constantly for three months straight. I mean, we would walk in to visit and push that button and it was playing in the background the whole three months that yeah. he was in the hospital before wow. he passed. And so those songs I became very connected to, but it also got to where it was hard for me to hear those songs after he passed mm -hmm. because I related them to him being in the hospital. And so I can only imagine for a while, I couldn't listen to the song as much as I loved it. And I love the words. It just brought me back to being, you know, sitting there in the hospital, yeah. seeing my dad go through what he was going through. So wow. I think the night that you sang it, I did cry. I, I couldn't get through it then. Um, but it, it also, I was able to really listen to the lyrics again and realize what that song is about and how precious the lyrics are um, in it. And so I've been able to look at it differently now That's since you great. sang it that night. It was like a turning point. It really was because it was just so difficult before. And now since then, I've been able to listen to it and, and love it and remember the lyrics for what they are saying and not place that song in the hospital with my dad. Right. You know, yeah. so and I think that your dad would want that for oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Would, I mean, re thinking back about yeah. your dad, I mean, he was a man of God and, and he loved the Lord. And I mean, that song totally speaks his life and his yeah. journey in his life. So, yeah. 
what's a special moment, and I hope I don't break down here, but one of the special moments about that song was it, it would be playing and, and he would be laying in his bed. And this was, there were certain times he was alert and certain times that he wasn't. And the times that he was, he would raise his hands and praise the Lord while he was in bed. And that was one. That's awesome. So I have that memory, which is fantastic. That's a great memory of the song. But um, you, I don't think I've ever heard anybody sing it as well as you do. And so when you chose the song to do in the show, I thought, I can't think of a better song, a better gospel song to do yeah. than I can only imagine. Well, we're going to do it justice today. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself. Is that you're going to be back out on the road I doing am. shows. I am. I can't wait to see you on stage again. Thank you. And we might bring you out. You know, that would be awesome. Yeah. Kind of bring back the good old days of going out during the middle of the show and maybe doing a few songs. Yeah. You're Somewhere. not allowed to get up and sing harmony, though. No. I won't do that. I promise. <laughs> you have to tell Brett the story. And I, Brett and I will go off of the stage. <laughs> I promise, Michelle. You have to tell the story. 
I heard you <laughs> telling Seth this story earlier, and I feel so bad that well, I yeah, ever said this so to bad. you. It you really killed. helped me to realize that I just do not sing harmony well. I just would never think that I would ever say Listen, something kind of been, rude to somebody or yeah, mean it. He's been that wasn't nice of me. Years ago. Tell the story. <laughs> years ago, we did a show together, mm -hmm. and I was a special guest, and you were lacking one harmony part for a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you said, we don't have harmony for that part. And I spoke up, and I said, I know that part. You I can get confident. up. I was yeah. very confident. I said, I can do this. <laughs> So I got up on the stage and I began singing harmony for that song. And <laughs> I'll never forget, <laughs> in the middle of the song, Michelle walks up to me and she whispers in my ear very nicely, get off the stage. <laughs> I, I swear there's no way I said it like that. Are you serious? You said it in a nice way, but you did <laughs> say get off the stage. How can you say that in a nice way? So that alone let me know. You know what? Maybe I'm not cut out to do harmony full time. Did Maybe I, I should stick you? to, to singing lead. I hope I didn't scar you. <laughs> you did not scar me. That's Are horrible. Sure? Are you sure she didn't send me over and me <laughs> That's whispering That's something he would say, but not me. No, it was me. <laughs> I was okay. surprised. I was really surprised that night because you were there. And then I looked over on the and side of the hug. stage. And you were over there on the side of the <laughs> I stage. I was sitting down on the chair just kind of with my head down thinking. Well, this is my official apology. I'm so sorry. Right. I forgive you. <laughs> okay. Get off the stage. <laughs> That's terrible. But no, I am going to be hitting the road again this summer, 2015, doing a few mm -hmm. shows, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can check me out, too, on Facebook. It's Greg Rhodes Music. So cool. I'm already a friend. I already liked your page. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think I've invited several of my friends to like your page. So I appreciate that. Yes. Any kind of following helps. Yeah, so. and you are so entertaining. You really are at your shows. You, you, you got the audience right in your hands. You got it going on, dude. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're obviously <laughs> handsome to look at. Oh. But you're you're such a great singer and such a great performer. So thanks. I enjoy getting out in the crowd. I enjoy kind of like what you do, Brett. I mean, you know, you you helped me along the way to 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 learn how to entertain a crowd. So I like getting out in the crowd and and involving the crowd. You know, when someone yeah. goes to a show, they want to forget their worries. Absolutely. They want to have a good time, and that's what I try to do when I put on a show. So. Well, I promise you that if we do another show together sometime. Um, I will not tell you to get off the stage. <laughs> well, I promise you, I won't sing harmony. Right. Okay, we got a deal. All right. I think we should one time sing harmony to her. Whatever we feel. It may not be right. I'll have to plug my ears. Right. It will not be right, I can assure well, you I that. know, but it would be so funny. We could put it on YouTube. Maybe we'll do that. And yeah. I'll have to plug my ears as we do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do one of my favorite songs. And it's one by my favorite group of all time. Mm -hmm. Probably the most influential group on me with my music. Wow. A group called Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. yeah. Rumor, the record, the, the whole album of Rumor's record is my favorite of all time. The project itself, I mean, just the time and, and the efforts involved into making that what it was. Well, the, it's still relevant. Their music is still as relevant today as it was when it came out in the 70s and 80s. Their, I mean, their music is timeless. It really, really is. Yeah. And we're going to do a song called Go Your Own Way which just rocks, and the band is thrilled to play it. And I'm so, glad that I was able to help pick that. Because I know, you, know, you, you asked. You said, you know, what would be a cover song that you'd love to do? And I said, go your own way for sure. You couldn't have picked a better one. Loving you isn't the right thing to do How can I ever change things that I feel if I could, maybe I'd give you my world How can I, when you won't take it from me You can go your own way If I could, baby, I'd give you my world Open up, everything's waiting for you You can go your own way
Greg Rhodes, I have had the best time tonight singing with you and hanging out. Did you have a good time? I had an awesome time. The band rocked. The band did rock. I was telling them after we had, you know, they were packing up and everything, I said, this was the most fun. You guys rocked. It was just, it was like a concert, a mini yeah. concert. Yeah. Well, and that's what's, our band is so extremely talented that these guys can just, I'm amazed every time we do one of these shows how quickly they put this music together. And how awesome it always sounds. These guys are on it. The time and dedication it takes to, to make a show like this mm -hmm. and all the behind the scenes things, you yeah. know, that, that, that you see, it's like, wow, a lot is involved to make this happen, but to make a show come together like this so yeah. quickly. So quickly, yeah. And all the camera crew and everything, I mean, everyone's on top of their game. And what about me and Brett? Definitely. Okay, you just want to definitely. Was I? I mean, would you say was <laughs> I? I just want to tell you, I'm really. We're like proud parents of yours because we've known you since you were little. But yeah. um, every time I hear you, I'm just blown away by how better you get all the time. And it's just we're we're really proud parents. And to see where your life is now, with a baby and and married to a wonderful gal, um, it's been, been beautiful for us to watch your life grow like that. It's it's been amazing. You, you've made some great choices in your life. You've 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 chose a great path for yourself and Thanks. and we couldn't be more proud of you i appreciate that you know i feel like right now is is the time in my life where you know i'm the most happy you yeah know, having a daughter now and, yeah you know i've always wanted a family so yeah. but also to be able to be doing the music again and mm -hmm. traveling you know it, it's really uh it's really awesome yeah we're glad you're back at it yes i am too because you, you did take a couple years off because you know you were wanting to start a family yeah i wanted to start a family and everything yeah you were too talented to, to not do music so mm -hmm. thank you <clears throat> but the songs you chose tonight, I really, I thought the band, like you said, really, really rocked it. And I feel you know, like you had a challenge a little bit with some I of the songs. I did, you know? I challenged you. <laughs> took me to a, a level I've never been to before. Well, That's you have good. a great range, but his range is even higher than yours. So he sees up in my range a little bit. So it was a challenge for, for you a little bit, but you did great. It was fun, though. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. I like to make him uh, be a little edgy and a little stressed a little bit. I think he does better <laughs> when he's under a little pressure. I do, too. Yeah, really me, too. Do. Well, man, it, it was great having you. Yeah. And I, I'm sure we're going to see you around. Yeah. I can't wait for the folks to see you back on TV and mm -hmm. doing the music. I appreciate that. And now that this show is being seen throughout Indiana on the PBS stations, you're, they're going to go, man, I remember that guy. So it'll be good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's end this thing. I don't want it to end. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. about, to break, have to, I'm about to break down crying. I don't want it to end. <laughs> okay. All right. One, two, three. Cooking, Cooking Bells, Bells Playhouse. Playhouse. Woo! We love you. Woo. That's a wrap.